difference that one person can make in the lives of many. And we are so happy to have you here, your whole family. And uh, this is just the beginning of something great, and I just know it. And so we're, if Pastor Elon is ready, he will come, and uh, we will be get ready to hear from her. Amen. 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 We thank everyone for coming out. Yes, we thank everyone for coming out this afternoon to celebrate our mothers. Amen. Amen. We thank God for us uh, having this opportunity to do this. This is our very first time putting on a monthly day luncheon. We want this to be annual. We want to do this every year. So we thank God for the turnout that we have today. But uh, just to speak on our speaker for this afternoon, uh, Evangelist Perales, I met her in January 2012. And uh, she came to our church, her and her family, they came, visits a couple of times, and then they joined. And they lived in the neighborhood, because we were at, at that time, we were at the high school, Henry Ford, um, was that Henry Ford? Yep, Henry. Yeah, Henry Ford uh, High School. We were there having services there. And then, um, as I began to see the interest in some other members in evangelism, when I offered the classes for the, evangelist, the evangelistic class, she was one of the first ones to sign up. And so when they began to do their lessons, she would turn her lessons in. And it was just, to, it was good to see her with that enthusiasm to uh, really learn God's word and begin to go out as I speak. Now they are, the, the ones who've already received their evangelistic training are looking for places where they can minister to women right now. So they're trying to get these callbacks and, and things like that. That's, that's where we're going with our evangelistic team where we can go out and reach the lost. That was the whole purpose. But she was so enthusiastic in, tr in uh, really doing the lessons and finishing the lessons. And we thank God that last year, uh, uh, Sister Perales became an evangelist. Her and the three others became evangelists in our ministry. So this is our first time hearing her. I don't know if this is her first time speaking in front of a large crowd. I don't know. But uh, we're going to turn it over to her. I want you to pray for her. Amen. Amen. You know, uh, encourage her as she begins to speak to the mothers today. Because we're all one family. And we uh, just want to encourage her so she can encourage you all to keep going on in God's name. Amen. 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 So with that all said, I would like to uh, introduce to some... Uh, Sister Evangelist Corrales. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I count it a privilege and an honor to stand before you women and men of God. You know, God is so awesome and he's so good. You know, I thank and praise God for Pastor Elon and his wife and his family also because they has really encouraged me and in the word and I love the way he teaching and made me want to get into the word and learn a little bit more. You know, because sometimes you get confused when you go out there and you go from church to church. But God wants us to be in a stable place where we can hear the word and hear his truth. Not just the word, but hear his true word. You know, so I think and praise God for that. I'm going to pray. Father God, I thank you right now, Lord Jesus, for allowing me to stand before your people and give this word, Father God. Father, I thank you for allowing me to decrease that you may increase, oh God. Speak through my vessel, oh God. Let the, he, the hearers be able to hear what the word, ha, just the word that you have for them, oh God. Encourage their hearts, oh God, as you encourage my heart. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. amen. And I'm coming from Samuel, 1 Samuel, and it's called, my title of the message is, What Happens When a Mother Pray? What happens when a mother pray? Woo! That's a powerful statement right there by itself. Because when mothers get down on their knees and they begin to intercede for their family and they intercede for their children, things happen. Yeah. God begins to do wonderful works in their family's lives. You may not see the results right away, but if you trust and believe, God is going to do what he said he's going to do if you ask him. But you got to believe it in your heart and know without a shadow of doubt that God is going to do it. Yes. Now Hannah was a woman. She was married to a man called Elkanah. I didn't give you any scripture because it's in 1 Samuel, and it's a lot of scripture to read, but I'm just going to go from my notes. Mm -hmm. And she had a, a she had a husband named Elkanah. He was married to a, a woman called Paniah. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And he had a, and Hannah was uh, Paniah's rival, mm -hmm. which that means that she was against, uh, Paniah was against Hannah. Mm -hmm. She had a problem with Hannah, well, Hannah had a problem with her, rather, because Hannah didn't have any children. And God said, he closed up Hannah's womb, but he closed her womb up for a reason. He closed it up because he wanted to show Hannah that it's not even about her. He wanted her to get down on her knees and begin.
begin to intercede, to begin to pray and ask God, I need you to do something in my life. Amen. This woman was hurting. She was troubled. She was depressed. She didn't know what to do. But God said, okay, I'm going to let her get on the knees. I'm going to let her fast and I'm going to let her pray. Now every year, Hannah will go up to the house of the Lord to worship every year. And Penelope will bring her children. And this tiny, this tiny Hannah. Hannah was like, oh my God, Lord, I want a child. And her husband, he didn't understand what she was going through. He would see her crying. He would see her weeping. He asked, he said, why are you weeping? What's wrong with you? Isn't I'm better than 10 kids? And, and he, she was like, it's not, it's not about you. It's about me wanting a child. I want to be fulfilled. And we know that children are a blessing up from the Lord. God gave us children. And God wants our children to be a blessing to us. But we have to instill some things into them. We have to instill his word in them. We got to instill his Teach them how to pray. We got to teach them how to fast. And we don't do these things. How would they ever know? How would they ever know that there's a God in heaven that can answer their prayers? There's a God in heaven that's going to move on their behalf. And we don't teach them. We are the ones who have to show them. And how do we do that? Through example. So Hannah said, I have to get on my knees. Now she went to God. She said, I want a child. But she didn't just ask for any child. She asked for a male child. Right? She was pacific. And that's how we have to do. We have to be pacific when we go to God. We have to go to God and we have to be direct. Lord, this is what I need. This is what I want. If it's in your will, Lord, let it be done. And God will hear our prayers. He will hear our cry. But it's a season and it's a time for everything. God don't move always when we want him to. He always come on time. Because God wants to go through some things first. You know, this woman suffered. It wasn't easy for her to walk around and look at her husband with other children. You know, it wasn't easy for her. She, she was hurt. She was bitter. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Hallelujah. Jesus. Amen. So, let me go over here. It says, now had her husband, Elka, I noticed she was weeping, which I told you before. He asked her, why do you eat, not eat? And why is your heart grieved? I am not better than you than ten sons. I feel my love is better, greater than any children. Now the Bible said after Hannah and Elkanah finished eating and drinking, Hannah got up and she went to the house of worship. Mm. She didn't go nowhere, but she went to the Lord and said, Lord, I need you. I need you to move, Lord. Hallelujah. I don't want to hear nothing my husband got to say. I want to hear from you and only you. Because my husband can't help me with this situation. I need you to help me with this. Where, Elkin, where Eli the priest was sitting, he was the one people the one that people would go to for traditional rulings. He was the judge, what you would say. So she went before him, but she didn't want to talk to him. She went right on past him and said, I'm going here to pray. I'm going here to fall on my knees because I'm in bitterness of soul. I'm angry. I'm mad because I cannot produce a child. She needed to talk to the Lord about her situation, about what she was going through. Now, bitterness of soul means causing or soaring, showing sorrow. Discomfort, pain, grievous. That's powerful right there. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of for a person to carry all that kind of information. But she's human. Yeah. And God knew she was human. But he can fix it. Yeah. Now that's how some of us need to do today. We are bitter. We are angry because something didn't go our way. Something happened quick, quick enough for us. So we got a little angry. We got a little bitter. But you know what? You need to get that over to God. He said, cast all your cares upon him. Because his yoke is eating his burdens of life. So if you carry a burden, you don't need to carry it. And it's not your battle. The battle belongs to the Lord. Give it to him. Let him work it out for you. Sometimes we feel mistreated. We feel hurt, even in the church. We feel lost. We feel down. We feel discouraged. You know, because something happened to us. A member of that hurt our feelings or something like that. But that ain't the time to go get in the corner. That's the time to fall down on your knees. And say, Lord, I need you to help me with this situation. This person offended me. But the Bible said if you have a, somebody offended you over that person and you get it right. He said, go to the next person around the corner. He said, go to that person. Talk to them. Find out what's going on. See, because you might be thinking they are mad at you about something, but they might have had something on their mind that day. They might have been going through something. They may not spoke to you, but it, it wasn't because they had a problem with you. It was because they had something on their mind. Mm. But if you never went to that person and communicated with them to find out what was going on with them, then you would never know. Right. You would never know. That's why he say if you got an off between somebody, you go to them. Yeah. Hallelujah. Thank yeah. you, Jesus. That's right. Yeah. Hannah was anguished, meaning she was in distress. Uh -huh. she, is, she expressed great suffering from worry, grief, and pain that caused depression. Have you ever been in a place where you were so depressed that you didn't know how to get a prayer through? Mm. You didn't want to read the word. You didn't want to go to church. You had your head down. That's a tough place to yeah. be. Yeah. But you know, God always got a rabbit in the bush. He'll send somebody to lift you up. Yeah. He'll send somebody to encourage you. And you know, it's going to be all right. I've got your back. Because he said, I'll never leave you for a second. I'm right there with you, carrying you to your store. He said, when you see one set of footprints, that's what I'm carrying. So I don't walk with your head down. Yes. Know that God is going to bring you out. He's going to encourage 
you. That's what a praying woman do. It's power in prayer. It's power in prayer. Hallelujah. So that we may decrease, that he may increase. You want to be anointed? Give it to some prayer. When you're going through warfare, ain't no time to be telling talking to nobody. That's the time you need to be talking to the Lord. Because he's the only one who fits your situation. Yeah, we may going to encourage you, but he's the one who's going to fix the situation. He's the one who's going to bring you up. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hannah was so depressed that she would just weep. Have you ever been in a place where you just weep and cry? Hallelujah. I've been there before. I've been there where I had to weep and I know which way I was going to go. But I knew if I kept on pressing in the church, I kept on going to church, I kept on reading my word, I kept on doing what God called me to do, that one day I was going to have my breakthrough. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. emotions. She was grieving and very sorrowful. When a person is going through and they have a heavy heart, that's the time to cry out to the Lord. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy does come in the morning. Hallelujah. Now the Bible says Hannah was in bitterness of soul. The word soul means moral or emotional nature of a human being spiritual or emotional. Sometimes in our life we go through emotional trauma or we just feel spiritually drained. I have been in a place where I felt like I didn't want to live. Had no life in me at all. But God came through and said, you can make it. You can make it. Don't give up. There's no time to give up. You got to keep going. Because there's other people out there that I saved you to help. Hallelujah. You got a word that you got to give them. If I'm laying up there dying and depressed in my mess, how can I help them? Hallelujah. That's the time we should feel our, fall on our knees and we should pray. That's what Hannah did. She weeped. She expressed how she felt to God in prayer. When Hannah prayed, she was saying, Lord, look at my suffering. Look at my pain. Look at my distress. Look at what I'm going through. I need a child, Lord. I want this child. Not for myself, but I'm going to give this child back to you. Hallelujah. She asked God to give her a male child. Hannah was specific, direct, and sincere. God expects the same thing from us. He wants us to be specific, direct, and sincere oh, in yes. prayer. Yes, yes. Specific, direct. Go straight That's to the specific. point. Yes. We got to be the one to push for God. God already knows what's in our heart. That's right. So we got to be the one to push with Him. All you got to do is express. He just wants us to open our mouths yes. and say it to Him. <laughs> Hannah made a vow to, the, to God called the Nazarite vow. She vowed that she would give her child back to him. Mm. She vowed that no razor would come upon his head for the rest of his life. This is known as the Nazarite vow. For this vow was a, for, for a designated time, a period, usually no more than a few weeks or months. But she said for the rest of his life. For the rest of his life, Lord, he's going he gonna to be a Nazarite. Okay? Now that's some dedication right there. Yeah. Yeah. This from a praying woman now saying, Lord, this is what I want my child to be. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. During this time, a person would refrain from wine, mm -hmm. cutting of hair, touching the dead bodies. But Hannah promised her son would be a Nazarite for life. Mm -hmm. After making that vow, she continued praying before the Lord. Meaning she spent plenty of time with the Lord in prayer. Mm -hmm. Not no five minutes. Right. Right, Lord, da, 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 da. Okay, Lord. <laughs> uh -uh. She got down and she went to prayer. Right. She went to talking to the Lord saying, Lord, I'm hurting right now. Help me. Right. That was the fact. That was no five minute prayer. She prayed from her heart. She spoke from her innermost thoughts and feelings, sincerity and devotion. That was a devoted woman. Every year going to the house of the Lord to pray, that was faithfulness. And that's what we need to do sometimes. We need to be faithful. Yes. Faithful to the Lord. Yes. You know, sometimes we be so wishy-washy, double-minded men is unstable in all these ways. Mm -hmm. Okay, we get to get some stableness going on. Because God wants us to be stable so we can use us for his glory. This made Eli think. Now, when she was praying, Eli, the priest, thought she was drunk. He said, Something is wrong with this woman. Something is seriously going on with her. Her mouth, wouldn't even, her mouth was moving, but he didn't hear nothing coming out. Because she was praying from her heart. She was pouring out her soul to the Lord. Saying, Lord, I need you. Okay? Making my request known 
known to the Lord. That's what we have to do. We have to make our request known to the Lord. That's what Hannah did. She made a request known to the Lord. Hannah knew that she had to trust the Lord at this time. She was at the breaking point where she became desperate and she needed the Lord to move on her behalf. Have you ever been in, so, so, in a corner where you so desperate you need God? Yes. Your, wall, your, your back is backed up against the wall and you say, Lord, now I can't move to the left, I can't go to the right. I got to stand in a straight down path. Mm. I need you, Lord, my back against the wall. I am frustrated. Mm. I need you to move, Lord. Right, right. God, I hear you. Yes, you in Psalm 62 and 8, it says, trust in the Lord. Trust in him trust at him. all times, you people. Pour out your heart before him. God is a refuge for us. Refuge means shelter, protection from danger, difficulties, a personal thing that gives shelter comfort. That's what God does to us. He shelters us. Yes. Even when we wound it. Yes. When things is going bad, he shelters us. Hallelujah. Hannah let Eli know that she's not a wicked woman, but she had been grieving. He didn't understand what she was going through because she really didn't talk to him about it. She talked to the Lord about it. Mm. Me, with, with grieving and means worrying, stop crying. God has heard your request. God will hear your request. He'll hear, hear. He'll hear your request. But he said, be anxious for nothing. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made to, known to God. He said, with thanksgiving. So we got to thank him when things is going bad. Yes. We got to thank him when things is going good. Yes. We got to thank him when things is going around us. Why should I thank him? Mm -hmm. He's the creator of your soul. Yeah. That's right. why you should thank him. Yeah. He's worthy to be praised. He's the one going to fix your situation. That's right. So that's why we give him praise. Right. When we feel the bad, we still got to thank him. Right. Because we know that our Redeemer lives yeah. within us. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. God's going to give you peace that surpasses all Hallelujah. understanding. Hallelujah. When you're going through some storms like Heather was going through, God will give you that peace that you don't even understand why you got peace. Lord, all this stuff going on around me, and I still got peace? Let me tell you something. On this week alone, my daughter went in the hospital for surgery. My son went to jail. Hallelujah. I got sick. But guess what? I still got the glory. Selling drugs, caught up in some ungodly relationship, sick today, mentally, and some that turned their back on God. Mm. That you need to get down on your knees. Come on. And you yes. need to intercede and pray for their very soul. Yes. Pray that God will bring them out because right now in the world that we're living in, it's our babies that's dying. Come on. It's young people that's dying. That's we're right. going to more young people casting through the than we went to older people. Yeah. That's right. I got a friend right now, son, got shot in the head mm. last Wednesday. You know, another mother got to bear her child. Right. You know, we look for our children to bear the else, but it's, yes. we bear our babies. That's right. So that means that somebody, the church, we got to get on our knees yes. really and sincerely yes. pray. Yes. We got to touch the good part of time. We got to do some warfare. Hallelujah. In prayer. Mm -hmm. In prayer. Touching in the grid. Mm -hmm. He said, with two or three touching in the grid, I'm in the midst. Yes. Yes. You don't need a whole bunch of people. You just need you and another person yes. to intercede together on the behalf of the people. Because yes. God gave us a command to pray yes. for everybody. Yes. Men, women, children. It don't matter. Pray for everybody. Pray for our president, yes. all our leaders, pray for them. Yes. If you see something in them that you don't like, pray for them. Yes. Don't talk about them. Pray for them. Yes. Ask God to open up their eyes so they can see. That's the power of prayer. That's what prayer do for you. It changes situations. Yes, it now I was talking about. 
somebody, but prayer will change yes. it. It will change it. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. God said, whether the Lord will be of good cheer. Yes. Good cheer. God will renew our strength in time. Amen. He will give us the strength to go a little further. Hallelujah. 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 Hannah got to a point where God honored her prayer. Yes, he did. He gave her a son. Yes. He gave her a son. Mm -hmm. Just what she asked That's for. Cool. That's power. Mm -hmm. yes. And guess what she did? She, she gave him back, back to the Lord. Lord. Yes, yes. Hallelujah. Yeah, Thank you, Jesus. Yes, That's what we got to do. We got the problem children out there. That's not saying we got to give him back to the, the Lord. Lord. Yeah. Lord, that's your child. I just brought him into the world. But you handle him, Lord. And show me how to handle him. Yeah. Show me when to move, when to speak. Because sometimes we baby our kids. Mm -hmm. But God wants them to grow up. He wants them to grow up. We can't give them everything because they don't have nobody to depend on that's but right. us. Right. When they don't know how to trust in God, we're doing everything right. for them. Right. Right. Hallelujah. Right. God, we give them peace. Yeah. That's not your problem. Yeah. Let me handle them. I know it hurts. I know it don't feel good when you see your children out there on drugs or selling drugs. I know it don't feel good. Or they depressed. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. You don't know how to help them, but God does. Yes, he, does. he has the remedy to their problem. Yes. All we got to do is wait on him to give it to us. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank oh, you, Father yes. God. Yes. Thank, you. Thank you, God. So so we so we see that Hannah is an example of a praying and godly mother. Yes. From the time she first de desired to have a child, she prayerfully and purposely presented her child before the Lord. Yes. She regarded her heart as a gracious gift. From God, her son, from a great for a gracious gift from God, expressing her intentions to fulfill her vow by dedicating Samuel back to the Lord. Mm. That's, powerful. That's powerful. Can we dedicate our children back to the Lord? Yes. I didn't get to dedicate all my children back to the Lord, but you know what? My grandchildren, God gave me a set of checking chance. I started dedicating yeah. my babies back oh, to the Lord. Yeah. Here you go, Lord. Here you go, Lord. Here you go, Lord. I thank God for saving me. If it's only one of me that's going to reach out and touch my family, I thank God that I'm that Jesse. That's it. Hallelujah. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. That can be that light unto a dark world. Yes. Because even in your home, it can be a dark world to our children. Yes. It's a dark world to them. Yes. So they need to see some type of light. They need to see somebody living right. Yes. Because they're so disappointed. A lot of times they go to church, they're like, well, the church is doing this, the church is doing that. But sometimes we need to take our eyes off a of man and put our yeah. eyes on God. That's right. You see, because man will fail. Oh, yeah. But God will never fail. He'll never fail. You know, we put up our, 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 our minds and our hearts on oh, my pastor, this, my pastor, that. God don't want you to make him no God. That's right. And sometimes we put pastors and, and teachers in the wrong spot. That's true. Put God in that spot. Yeah. And just pray God with you and the teacher that God himself to be a blessing to you. Because God said he will have no other God before oh, him. Yeah. Right. And I want nobody making me no God. Right. I want God to get the glory, not yeah. me. Right. I want them to see Christ and not me. Hallelujah, because yeah. that's who's going to get them to him. Yeah. Jesus Christ said, you lift me up, I draw all men unto me. Oh, to me. Yeah. So what we got to do? Lift him up. Lift yeah. him up. What we got to do? Lift, lift him, him up. up. Oh. We got to start who? Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah. Yeah. Thank you, Father yeah. God. Amen. We know that all things come together for the good to them that are called according to God's purpose. Everything work for your good. The good yeah. work for your good. The bad work for your good. The sick work for your good. Right. Whatever That's you're right. going through, it, it works, works for your good. good. That's right. yeah. God knows what's in you. He knows what he needs to bring out of you. He yeah. knows what he needs to help you get to yeah. the next place in life. God knows. He knows yeah. what's in your heart. Yes, he does. Sometimes our hearts can be very wicked. And God wants to press that wickedness out of there. Mm -hmm. He wants to get that anger and that bitterness out of there. Mm -hmm. He wants to help you become a pure Christian. Yeah. Holy oh, Christian. Yeah. And sometimes when you're going through it, you find out what's still in you. Because yeah. let me tell you something. When I was with me and my husband, I found out what's still in me. I said, oh, I got to get that right. I got to change that. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. But yeah. we're giving it to me. Yeah. He's still shining light on the way. Yeah. So when he's shining light on the way, it's up to us to get it right. Yeah. Fix it. Get it right. Okay, you got to get in your word, study about anger. Find out what God is saying to you about that anger you care. Right. That yeah. unforgiveness. Yeah. Okay, find out what he got in your heart. Yeah. So you can get it right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. This passage greatly encourages us when we're going through a trial. It's let us know that God will bring good out of all our suffering, afflictions, trials, and persecutions. Mm -hmm. See, we think when we get saved, we ain't got to go through nothing. Uh, oh, yes, we do. Oh, yes, That's when we start going through. Because yeah. let me tell you something the enemy don't like that you got saved. That's right. So now he want to come and get you and pull you back into that world. Mm -hmm. But guess what? That's when you're pressing to God when you're going through your trials and your tribulations. Yeah. Don't give up. 
stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Amen. 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 God bless. Amen. 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 Praise God. Amen. 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 I am just, I was just so yes. blessed by that. Yes. Oh my God. It is nothing like sincere, heartfelt truth. When a person speaks from their heart, yes. not putting on an ear, not trying to deliver a show, but that was heartfelt. Yes. And that's what makes it effective. Yes. And I, I thank God for you allowing God to use you. Yes. Well, you all encouraged today? Yes. Amen. See, the Lord would like to tell you that, that, that the good praying mother, a good praying woman is a thing of the past, or she is elderly. But we got some young, yes. good, praying women, that's right. whether they're mothers or not. And we thank God for that. And that's one of the things that is so important to us here at Christian Life is that not only is it about the worship service on Sunday morning, but what are we producing? Yeah. What are the results in our women, our men, children? Yes. There should be change. Yes. There should be evidence so that when we live this building, when we leave this building, somebody is affected yes. by our behavior yes. Yes. and our words. So I thank God for that. I was truly blessed by that. Amen. And we're just going to have, a, have a, a quick word of prayer. And then you all can continue to fellowship and eat. And uh, we'll, we'll pretty much wrap it up after Pastor Eli comes. But if you would just close your eyes and let's just go to the throne of God. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this day. A day, Father, that you have allowed us to see. We know many people did not get a chance to make it today. We know many people didn't even wake up today, but you saw fit to give us another chance, Lord, to lift your name up. And Lord, we are here to do that today. We thank God that this day is observed as Mother's Day, but we know every day is Mother's Day. Lord, we know that every day you bless us to, to see is a day that is for you. And today we heard, Lord, about a praying mother. And we heard about perseverance. We heard about good, true faith. We heard about commitment and determination. And Lord, we want to take on those characteristics in our lives so that we can pass them on to our sons and our daughters and to everyone we come in contact with. And so, Lord, we thank you for giving us the gift and the wherewithal, Lord, to hang in there that faith that you have placed in us, that no matter what we go through, we know that we don't have to give up because you will handle it. We thank you, Lord, for the testimony that we've heard. We thank you, Lord, for the life and the things that we have been through, not wanting to change a thing because it taught us and it brought us to this place. And it's up to us, Lord, to determine whether or not we'll push forward based on our past or if we'll live in the past. But, Lord, you allowed us to go through it, and you brought us through it. And it, we have to question, what am I going to do with what God has brought me through? And today, Lord, we commit to live for you. No matter what is in our past, we give it to you, and we leave it there. And, Lord, we move forward to live to you, to live for you, and to live in you. And, Lord, we thank you. And I ask a special prayer in the name of Jesus for all of these women these mothers, these grandmothers, these aunts, daughters, grandchildren. We pray, Lord, that we make a mark on this world from this little small church right here on Schaefer Highway. That, Lord, as we leave this place, our lives begin to affect others. If it's from a smile or a kind word or a reaction to a situation that people thought we should have reacted differently. But, Lord, we're calm and we demonstrate faith in you. Help us to affect the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Pastor Young. Amen. Amen. Were you blessed on this afternoon? Amen. Praise Father, thank you, Evangelist Perales, for allowing uh, the Holy Spirit to use you on uh, today. We thank all of you for 
joining us today. But you know, I, I, I would never leave a, a situation where to me we have heard the word of God. So to me, I can never leave a service without offering someone the chance to accept Christ yes. as their savior. Amen. So we're gonna have our we're gonna bow our heads and if there's anyone here who don't know Jesus Christ as their savior after hearing this message about a praying mother, about a woman who never gave up. She dedicated not only her child but herself into prayer and began to live for God and God blessed her. You might be here today who want to say, I, I want to know about that dedication. I want to dedicate my life to God. I want Jesus to be the head of my life. If you're here today and you never made Jesus Christ the head of your life, where every head is bowed and every eye is closed, just raise your hand if you want to make Jesus the head of your life. If you're here today, we will pray with you. Amen. If you're here today and you've already made Jesus Christ the head of your life, but you've backslidden from him, and uh, you want to restore your fellowship with him on this Mother's Day weekend. You want to restore your life back to the fellowship you had with him when you accepted him. We want to pray with you even on today. If you're here today, just raise your hand while every head is bowed and every eye is closed. If you're here today, amen. And last but not least, if you're here and you don't have a church home, Christian Life Baptist Church wants to be that church hall. We are teaching church. We believe in teaching the Bible verse by verse on Sunday morning and Tuesday nights as God has often given us this opportunity to do so. And we also have Sunday school as well. So if you are here and you're looking for a church home and you want Christian life to be your church home, if you're here today while every head is bowed and every eye is closed, just raise your hand right where you sit and we will be that church for you. Amen. Come on, put your hands together. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Amen. Amen. This would like to say too, as far as announcements, uh, we do videotape our services. So this service was videotaped. So you can, I think it'll be up on YouTube uh, tomorrow. So it'll be on YouTube by tomorrow. And our website. <laughs> yes, we have a website. It'll be on our website. Now, YouTube, if you want to see any of our services on YouTube, you can write this down. It's really CLC, standing for Christian Life Church, CLC Detroit, all one word. So when you go to YouTube, you just put in CLC Detroit, all one word, and all of our videos will pull up. Just when you go to YouTube. So that's that's how simple it is for that. Now, of course, you just go to our website, too, and it'll be on our, our website. Or you can go to Ustream because that's where we just streamed this live. This was live. We just did it live. We do all of our services live. And uh, so now they can go there too. But the ones that I know will be there for sure tomorrow will be uh, the one on YouTube, CLC Detroit, or Christian Life C. Uh, dot org. That's our website. So we want to let you know that that, that service was taped and we thank God for it. So we'll get you a copy too as well. And amen. So we thank God for it. Now we thank everybody for being here. Once again, we said we would love to do this every year. So this was a great turnout for us. We have a special guest tomorrow on Mother's Day. Amen. <laughs> Sister McIntosh, she is here with us even on today. Raise your hand. Just went amen. Amen. That's Evangelist Stewart, Sister Trina Stewart's mother. She's going to speak with us on tomorrow. So we want this to be a tradition. We started this uh, two years ago when we allowed uh, women to come and speak on Mother's Day. Now this is our first time for the pre-Mother's Day or the day before Mother's Day. We thank God for it. We still want to keep this going and we thank God for this. Amen. Were you, were you blessed today on this afternoon? Amen. As Sister Eli said, we still have, I think we have food left and cake. We're going to cut that cake back there. And we do still have some drinks left. So still, just feel free to fellowship with one another. I want you to, once again, come up and, and congratulations to uh, Evangelist uh, Paralis. Encourage her to keep speaking. Now, all the other evangelists, y'all get ready because, you know, that's, she was our first one to speak. So now we know Evangelist. You know, y'all got some shoes to fill, so <laughs> to, to fall. Now, if there are people out there who want to be a part of this evangelistic team, we already have two uh, young ladies that are in training now. We have a evangelistic uh, uh, luncheon that's going to be in September to bring these other two young people that have started their training last year from the last luncheon. So they'll be finished 
by our luncheon in September. Now, if you want to be a part of the evangelistic team, of course you got to go through the training. The training is given by me. It's done on online. I give you the lessons online. Just give me your web, your email address, and I can send it to you. Uh, the lesson is a week at a time, and there's ten questions at the end. They're all multiple choice, and you answer the questions and you send it back to me through the email. But of course, that's for our members as well. But our evangelistic team is growing. We want to get to the women's prisons. We want to get to the men's yes. prisons. We want to get to the yes. women's facilities yes. that are in the drug rehab facilities. We want to get to the nursing homes. We want to be able to start traveling around. I can't do it all by myself. Amen. Right? Amen. So God has allowed all of you, if, because it's just, just if it, it don't take one person. It takes all of us to minister the word of God. And I thank God. Some places won't even let me in. And that's why we have women as far as being evangelists. So they can go into those places and speak as well. So we thank God for you. So um, I'm going to pray once again, giving the benediction. After that, you can feel free to grab more food and fellowship. Let's bow our heads. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this day, this wonderful day, uh, this pre-Mother's Day uh, event. We thank you for Evangelist Paralysis and her family and friends who are here, the church members who are here, and their family and friends who are here. We thank you for allowing this event to be a great success, encouraging these mothers that they all they have to do is just keep praying and keep believing and receiving that God, you, Father, have answered their prayer. Lord, that everything is going to be all right. We thank you for the testimonies that we have heard. We thank you for all of the families that are represented here today. As we dismiss from this place, Father, allow us to go to our several different homes and find everything in order. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 God bless you.